All right, so the time value of money means that a dollar received today is worth more than a dollar received oops, next year or the year after. This is because a sum of money invested today starts earning in that compound interest sooner than a sum of money invested sometime in the future. So a significant way to increase your wealth is to spend less than you earn and invest the difference. So that's kind of the key takeaway from this section is really save as much as you can, and, and, and uh, that will help you get uh, higher wealth at the future time. Now, the effective annual yield or the effective rate is the simple interest rate that produces the same amount of money in an account at the end of one year as when the account is subject to compound interest at a, state, at a stated rate. So we're kind of comparing a, a stated rate for a, a compounding and we're looking at the effective rate for if what it is a simple interest. <clears throat> Now there's a uh, doubling your money. There's a rule of 72. So a shortcut for estimating the number of years it's gonna take for your investment to double is divide 72 by your effective annual yield without the percent sign. So for example, if the effective annual yield is 6%, your money will double in approximately 72 divided by six, which is gonna be 12 years. And so that's kind of a rough estimate to get to figure out how much or how long it's gonna take to double your money. But we're not going to do that. We're going to actually kind of start and calculate future value and effective annual yield here. So you deposit $6,000 in an account that pays 3% interest compounded monthly. 3% is the nominal rate. Okay. And monthly, remember, uh, when we do monthly, monthly, that is going to be n is equal to 12. So for the first problem, we have a is equal to and we're investing $6,000 times 1 plus 0 0.03, which is our interest rate, divided by 12, which is how often we're compounding it, and then 12 times. And we want it after one year, so guess what? It's just one here, so it's pretty boring. And so we're going to calculate that. So let's go over here. And so we're going to have 6,000 times 1 plus... 0.03 divided by 12, parenthesis raised to the power 12 times 1. We're just going to even put that even though we know it's just 12. And we get $6,182, and we round that up, and 50 cents. So that gave us 6182.50. Now, the effective annual yield, that's what we do is if we had just plain old compound interest, no compounding uh, monthly, yearly, or whatever, it's just going to be just a compounding interest. And so how that works is we're going to say, okay, well, now we know what our future value is, 6182.50 equals our principal. We said, well, that was 6,000. And remember, when we did the really simple one, it's just 1 plus r times t. And in this case, t is 1. And we're looking for what r is. That's what we're solving for. So first things first, we have to divide both sides by 6,000. Now, remember, before I said don't, don't actually do that calculation. We'll just keep it all as 1 and then do the calculation at the end. And it's going to be the same thing here. So then we get 6182.50 over 6,000 equals, and that's just 1 plus r. Now we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. And so r is equal to 6182.50 over 6,000 minus 1. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is plug that into our calculator. All right, so we have 6182.50. 5 divided by 6,000, oops, not 60,000, and then minus 1. And again, we do all as one calculation, and we get 0 0.03041666666. So plugging that back over here, we get 0 0.03042, and we want it to the hundredth of a percent. So remember, we have to move decimal twice, so that's going to be 30 uh, four, the two's not going to round up to four, and that's going to be percent. So that's going to be our effective annual yield. Okay. And again, all we did was we, on this one, we did the compound formula, the A equals P times one plus R over N to the NT. This one we did A equals P times one plus RT, or yeah, RT. And so, you know, the T in this case is one, 
P, we already know, A, we already know, and so we solved it down, and we got that. So those are the two formulas we used to get it, and so then this one we had to actually solve for the R. All right. Now, what if we want to calculate the effective annual yield? So suppose your investment has a nominal interest rate R in decimal form. Again, you have to always use decimal forms. And pays compound interest in times per year. The investment's effective annual yield, Y, in decimal form is given by the following equation. Y is equal to 1 plus R over N to the power N minus 1. Now, the decimal form of Y is given by the formula should be converted to a percent. So it's going to give you a decimal form. You have to convert it to a percent. Now, if you're selecting the best investment from two or more investments, the best choice is the one with the greatest effective annual yield. So if you're saying, okay, well, we're going to test this one and we're going to test another one, whichever the higher one is, say this is the higher one, that's going to be the one you want to use. And when borrowing money, the effective or error if Effective rate or the effective annual yield is usually called the annual percentage rate. And if all other factors are equal and you're borrowing money, select the option with the least annual percentage rate because that's going to give you the least amount you have to pay back. When you want to get uh, an interest that they're going to pay you, you want the highest. When you pay them, you want the lowest. So it kind of is the inverse of, of each other there. All right, so here we go. Uh, what is the effective annual yield of an account paying 3.2% compounded quarterly? Again, quarterly, that's going to be N is equal to 4. So we have, now let's write our equation again so we don't forget it. Y equals 1 plus R over N to the power N minus 1. And now we're also going to look at how to do this on your calculator in a little bit. But first, we're going to do it, you know, just plugging and chugging here. So <clears throat> we're going to have 1 plus our rate, which is 0 0.032, divided by n, which we said was 4. We're raising that to the power of 4, because that's that, minus 1. Okay, so now we figure out what our yield is. And so we're going to take, and that was 1 plus 0 0.032 divided by 4 to the power of 4. Now remember, when you have that, we have to arrow down so we can get that. So we have minus 1, and the minus 1 is not in the power section. And then you enter, and you get 0 0.032386. So let's write all that down. So we get 0 0.032386. And we want it to the nearest hundredth. So if we convert that back to a decimal, we get 3.2, and that Three is going to go up to 4, and that's going to be percent. And so that's going to be our effective annual yield. Now, if everybody has an 84 calculator, or maybe even an 83, we can use our calculator to do this. And the way we do that, let's clear this out. We're going to hit apps, which is right here. And then we're going to do 1, which is the finance. And then we're going to arrow up because we have to go up here and we want this effective. And that's going to be our effective annual yield. And now we're going to plug in the rate. Now we're going to plug in the rate as actually the decimal. We're not going to convert it to a decimal. We're going to put it as a percent. Number of times per year. So now we have to put comma. We did it four times per year. And then in parenthesis, and it gives us 3.24 automatically. We didn't even have to do anything else. It was already there. So this one gave us 3.24%. And we didn't have to remember that equation. But we had to know how to use our calculator, or we also had to have a TI-84. So this is the one that's going to be used for most things. This one is if you're special and you have the 84 and you remember how to use your calculator, you can do that one. All right, so hopefully that will help you through this section of the book.